This is part two of our learning. We had just finished reading the verses of Devarim 32-22, where, again, we have a warning of misfortune from Hashem um, with the words we're looking at from my Avinu Malkini prayers. Then we read Matthew 5, and the central, all-important section um, this chapter is incredibly important. You need to put the whole thing together when reading it. But right now we were looking at the point when Yeshua is teaching us, do not think I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish or but to fulfill. And that fulfill word, we need to reset our minds to know that it means to verify, to uphold, and to make complete with meaning not to throw away, cast away, or put aside, or to finish, even. For truly, I say to you, he says, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke of a Hebrew letter shall pass from the Torah until all is accomplished. Um, so we're going on reading about this word, avon. Iniquity is one of three Hebrew terms for sin. Avon, pesha, and chata. Chata is like a missing of the mark. It's just like I didn't quite get that, or it's a mistake, unintentional transgression. Pesha is a willful rebellion in spite of God. Avon is a distortion or perversion of the will of God. And, and it's that word, that's why I gave us the Yeshua Matthew um, 5 text, because he's sort of, to me, that's what it means. Don't distort it. Don't pervert it. If you leave off even a tiny bit of it, it changes the whole meaning of, of a word. Even a tiny little bit of a stroke changes the letter. So this is why we're told not to add or to take away. Yeshua was very firm about the way that we can stay in his love by keeping his commandments, and that even the tiniest stroke of a Hebrew letter should not be removed from our eyes, hearts, lives in order that we should be able to shine his light because in the very pre preceding verse he's talking about the, the you hear it preached on all the time not to hide your light under a bushel and then he goes on to say don't do away with the torah and to me that implies that that's how we shine forth our light is shining forth the torah in our lives um so in following in sorry in the following text uh, which leads us again back to our current Torah reading context. We're going back to the book of the Midbar of uh, Numbers. We are reminded of what Hashem did um, after the sin with Midian, which we just spoke about. King Balak, upon Bil Am's advice, tempted the men of Israel. This is what will pres preserve us from sin, from error, and willful rebellion. Keeping close to our hearts, his Torah. So, Sam, if you'll please read Devarim, Deuteronomy, or was it Rebecca's turn? Who was next? I'm sorry, I lost one. It was Sam, right? I think so. Was it Rebecca? Well, it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Sam? Okay, okay, okay. Read Matthew. Yeah, see, my short term memory is very short. So, Sam will read for us Devarim 4. You're going to read 1 through 4, please. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgment which I am teaching you to perform, so that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord has done in the case of Baal Peor. For all the men who follow Baal Peor, the Lord your God has shamad, destroyed them from among you. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. I love that text. And that leads us to the word we're going to look at next, shamad, eradication. It's extreme destruction. It is extermination. Yaakov, the father of the only sons being shown and raised in the Torah destiny of Hashem's covenant, is concerned that his whole family will be eradicated by their surrounding enemies. He tells Shimon and Levi this after they avenge the rape of their sister Dina. 
Um, so in, in other words, he's basically worried that the Torah destiny is going to die right there with all of them, that the enemies are just going to, you know, fall upon them and, and eradicate them. Um, this word Shamad. So we're we'll back to Jasmine. If you could read for us Bereshit, Genesis 24, we're reading verse 30, please. And don't forget to unmute. Okay, so Bereshit, oops. Did I, okay. okay. Um, Bereshit, Genesis 24, 30. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have brought trouble on me by making me odious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And my men being few in number, they will gather together against me and attack me, and I will be Shamad destroyed, I and my household. Okay. So we're getting a feel, basically, for all these words, and we want to understand what it is we're saying. Um, so there's a similar line um, uh, in this prayer in the Siddur, um, this bedtime Shema, which we read at night, and it goes like this. We ask for Hashem to shield us, to remove from us foe, plague, sword, famine, and woe. So I think that this list includes one particular word, which is perhaps one of the most, sometimes daily, difficult enemies, plagues, destructive forces in our lives. And that is woe. So oi, the Hebrew word for woe, is found a number of places in the Bible. There are many in Jeremiah and a few in the following texts. Sorry, so the what's so this one? There's a few in the following texts uh, from Aetha, which is Lamentations. And this is the book that we are going to read traditionally on the ninth of Av. So yes, it chronicles all the terms we find out here, which we are asking Hashem in our prayer of Avinu Malkinu to cease, to prevent, to take from our lives and our future. So this context takes us into the experience of the Qurban, of the destruction. So, Rebecca, if you will read Ayeka, Lamentations 5, 7 through 5, 16 for us, please. Lamentations 5, 7. Our fathers sinned and are no more. It is we who have borne their iniquities. Slaves rule over us. There is no one to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. Our skin has become as hot as an oven because of the burning of the heat of famine. They ravished the women in Zion, the virgins in the city of Judah. Princes were hung by their hands. Elders were not respected. Young men worked at the grinding mill and youths stumbled under loads of wood. Elders are gone from the gate, young men from their music. The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Oi, woe to us, for we have sinned. Okay, so very powerful. All of these things are not meant to leave us with a knot in our stomach or leave us depressed. It's supposed to make us know that as we're praying these prayers, we can understand them more, we can feel them more, and then thus they have more power behind them, so to speak. So just because of where that ended and what we've looked at here, this is where we're going to finish for today, the learning of Avinu Malkinu, uh, with the notion and remembrance that the context for these fasts in the Bible come along with a promise that these days of lamentation will be turned from mourning into dancing, from sorrow into joy, that we all have woe, oi in our lives sadness distress desperation depression this woe this feeling of being exiled from our true selves from our families from our relationships from god but exile woe is temporary thanks to hashem through the exile through fasting through the woe we are meant to be built up into the people God made us to be. It is all meant to d diminish what we see right before our eyes. The terrifying things that are taking place literally right before our eyes. And that we could look a little wider at the bigger picture. When you fast, there's a point at which all your senses become heightened. 
things feel like they make a little more sense. So while we pray to be removed or rescued from this list of things, enemies, our inner enemy, sadness, fighting in relationships, fighting within ourselves, hunger, wanting for things that we really don't need, it never being enough, fear, terror at the what will be in our lives and the lives of our children. Just remember, there is comfort ahead of us. There is promise of joy and restoration. And so um, we will read now this awesome passage from Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 1. Um, and we're reading verse 12 through 17. All right. Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you have no compassion for Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, with which you have been indignant these 70 years? The Lord answered the angel who was speaking with me with gracious words, comforting words. So the angel who was speaking with me said to me, Proclaim, saying, Thus is the Lord of hosts. I am exceedingly jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. But I am very angry with the nations who are at ease. For while I was only a little angry, they furthered the disaster. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I will return to Jerusalem with compassion. My house will be built in it, declares the Lord of hosts. And a measuring line will be stretched over Jerusalem. Again, proclaim, saying, Thus is the Lord of hosts. My cities will again overflow with prosperity, and the Lord will again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. Amen. Beautiful. So we have that to hope for. Now, us in America, we wonder, how do we have that to hope for? Because we're not there. But we can trust in that same deliverance, hope, and preservation. Um, and also, just knowing that, you know, he said he's going to gather in his people from the ends of the earth. So that could be even from America, if he wills it. So with that, I ask, as we have done with previous prayers, and we did it once, um, with the, I think it was with the Mourner's Prayers, that we step beside our learning of this prayer and take a few minutes to actually lift up this prayer. Okay, so I would like to do this with you now. Um, last time we had all our mics unmuted and it just completely echoed. So keep them muted, but say it out loud if you would to yourself there. Think about it for a minute. And as you're looking at the words, really look at the words. And I am interested to see what Hashem highlights for you. It'll probably be just one verse that you'll feel, think, something, whatever. He'll show you which one it is. And at the end, if you would just, we'll share it. Because I'll tell you, if there's some a different one today, I'll tell you. But I'll tell you what he shared with me um, during our fast prayers yesterday. So so if you would just keep an open mind and an open heart. Don't go looking for it. Just pray this with me. And then um, share at the end if, if you have something to share. So, and we want to look at this word, kavana, before we pray. It's translated as intention. It's actually the direction that you're pointing your heart. So where is your kavana? Just breathe in, let's take a minute. Let's point our hearts in the direction of Hashem, our redeemer, our helper, our healer, the only one who can take us, take us from, or better yet, bring us through the trials which are upon us and the woe, the oi, which is increasing in the world. So let us lift up this prayer in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Not only we lift this prayer, Avinu Malkinu to you, that we do this for our nation, for our families, and we make these requests to you with now understanding some of the history and some of the uh, background of how you used these words. Um, and we pray that you will bless this time as we lift this to you and enter into Shabbat, Shabbat, prepare to enter into Shabbat. So Lord, we say, open the gates of heaven to our prayer. Avinu Malkinu, our Father, our King, we have sinned before you. Our Father, our King, we have no King but you. Our Father, our King, deal kindly with us for your namesake. 
Our Father, our King, bless us with a good year. Our Father, our King, nullify all harsh decrees upon us. Our Father, our King, nullify the thoughts of those who hate us. Our Father, our King, thwart the counsel of our enemies. Our Father, our King, exterminate every foe and adversary from upon us. Our Father, our King, seal the mouths of our adversaries and accusers. Our Father, our King, exterminate pestilence, sword, famine, captivity, destruction, iniquity, and eradication from the members of your covenant. Our Father, our King, withhold the plague from your heritage. Our Father, our King, forgive and pardon all our iniquities. Our Father, our King, wipe away and remove our willful sins and errors from your sight. Our Father, our King, erase through your abundant compassion all records of our guilt. Our Father, our King, return us to you in perfect repentance. Our Father, our King, send complete recovery to the sick of your people. Our Father, our King, tear up the evil decree of our verdict. Our Father, our King, recall us with a favorable memory before you. Our Father, our King, remember us for good life. Our Father, our King, remember us for redemption and salvation. Our Father, our King, remember us for sustenance and support. Our Father, our King, remember us for merits. Our Father, our King, remember us for forgiveness and pardon. Our Father, our King, make salvation sprout for us soon. Our Father, our King, raise high the pride of Israel, your people. Our Father, our King, Raise high the pride of your anointing. Our Father, our King, fill our hands from your blessings. Our Father, our King, fill our storehouses with abundance. Our Father, our King, hear our voice, pity and be compassionate to us. Our Father, our King, accept with compassion and favor our prayer. Our Father, our King, open the gates of heaven to our prayer. Our Father, our King, remember but that we are but dust. Our Father, our King, please do not turn us from you empty-handed. Our Father, our King, may this moment be a moment of compassion and a time of favor before you. Our Father, our King, take pity upon us and upon our children and our infants. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of those who were murdered for your holy name. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of those who were slaughtered for your oneness. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of those who went into fire and water for the sanctification of your name. Our Father, our King, avenge before our eyes the spilled blood of your servants. Our Father, our King, act for your sake, if not for our sake. Our Father, our King, Act for your sake and save us. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of your abundant compassion. Our Father, our King, act for the sake of your great, mighty, and awesome name that is proclaimed upon us. Our Father, our King, be gracious with us and answer us, though we have no worthy deeds. Treat us with charity and kindness and save us. Shem Yeshua Amen. I uh, pray a wonderful, blessed Sabbath to you. And I'll say Shabbat Shalom. And um, I'll keep the recording going because I'd like to, you know, document your thoughts too. Let me share with you first of all the line that always touches my heart and kind of like tunes me into the fact that this is for real. It's a real thing and that it only has to be a moment of connection to feel that for it to be something that lasts forever is that verse our father our king may this moment be a moment of compassion and a time of favor before you you can just take it any time of the day if it's a real 10 seconds then that can last 
a lifetime. You can go back to that moment in your mind and your heart over and over a thousand times. Um, but the thing that stuck out to me as I prayed it yesterday was towards the end here. The Our Father, Our King, act for your sake, if not for our sake. Act for your sake and save us. Those sort of really stuck out to me because I thought, I think sometimes for me personally, I see so many reasons why Hashem should act. You know, they're evil. There's so much evil. There's so much horror. There's so much perversion. And there should be so many reasons for him to step in and just to stop it. Um, and I fear for how much worse it can get at times. But this made me realize that Hashem will, for his great name's sake, because he promised, and who he is, in essence, he has to keep his promise. So that means we will be safe in times of trouble. And um, it's all according to his will and plan. And uh, not for our sake, not for me, not for so we can lessen the pain of, of my life. It's not so you can lessen the pain of my children. Not so that you can lessen the pain of the world, but for your sake, name's sake, come quickly so the Lord can see, the world can see that you're real, that the world can have a chance to come to you and in that moment say, oh my God, I mean it. And um, so those are what really stuck out for me and I'd be pleased to hear um, you guys share if there was anything that stuck out to you from those prayers. And you can unmute. Now, okay. Don't forget to unmute if you have anything to say. Okay. Well, <laughs> I've always liked the line, uh, remember that we are but dust, because that kind of sums up, I don't know, for me, a lot of the asking for forgiveness and <laughs> when I'm rebellious and where is that one where like consciously like remember the good in me because i am i am just but dust and then maybe i won't take myself too seriously in other aspects and other aspects more seriously so. excellent absolutely that line was also in our mourner's prayers you know it was remember but we are but dust so it reminds us where we have come from, where we're eventually going. And, and yet it's amazing because we are dust, but he cares so much about our lives and mm -hmm. the potential. So, so yeah, that's going to be awesome too. And what about you, Jasmine or Rebecca? Did you have anything stick out to you or just any thoughts in, on the lesson? Or anything to share? You can do on you because I want to hear it. Well, I think, honestly, as of lately, because I feel, um, well, especially here in, in home lately, we've, we've been, well, I know, feeling attacked and stuff. Um, you know a little bit about that, yeah. so less to what we've talked about. Um, but feeling that has been very overwhelming um, and hearing <laughs> our father, our king, nullify all harsh decrees upon us. Our Father, our King, nullify the thoughts of those who hate us. And Father, our King, thwart the counsel of our enemies. Because it feels like that was really, it was powerful for me, for what, like, what we've been going through here at home as a family lately. Um, and not just that, but I think is, you know, on a larger scale too going out further, but I think that's very comforting. <laughs> that was very powerful for me. <laughs> it is, absolutely. Thank you so much. That <laughs> is absolutely that our Father, our King, seal the mouths of our adversaries and accusers. And so you can just, and those ones that you mentioned, so then you can act the saying that. It seems like when I say that, I'm able to, whatever that was, say, okay, I forgive it. And now, now it's yours. You're going to do that. And in, even if, you know, you still think of those things that people say to you that hurt.
but you can let them just kind of pass through and know that they they mean nothing yes. in his sight and really it's that's all that should matter and that he will kind of like erase that all from mm-hmm. you know the record of of our lives the false accusations and the the lies that are told about us they're not going to be on the record because um because he will erase them and not boarding boarding the council of our enemies because you know it, it's worrisome like you said in a personal level and then on a, gr- a greater scale uh you know politically even it's like you know there's something going on behind the scenes and you have to be blind not to know that so just to know that he's not going to let those plans, those wicked plans come to fruition. Um, it's very comforting. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything to share with us, Rebecca, before we... Well, um, I was also going to mention um, the line about sealing the mouth of our adversaries and the accusers. Um, you know, as far as just not letting what people say or accuse you of, of, you know, getting to you and, and having God be able to help us to um, to kind of just not let them have any influence to arrest. And, but then um, because it's painful and we don't, we don't need to, we don't need to let other people hurt us that way. Yeah. But the the part that, you know, at the very end, even though we have no worthy deeds, we're asking him to treat us with charity and kindness. And I think that that is because we have just recognized him throughout this entire prayer as our father and our king. So just by default that he is our father and our king, that we will be forgiven. Amen. Beautiful. Yes, I love how that ends with that, just as a reminder to us, you know, because this is a long list of, of askings, you know, and I look forward to continuing on with you all, because as we get towards the end, they're so powerful, you know, and it goes into history. And once we dig into those, we touch and we dig into the lives that the, that this prayer is literally referencing, which I would like to do. So anyway, I just... Thank you guys so much for your time and um, and, and Shabbat Shalom.